this is actually a live view of your camera. So um, yeah, I mean, this is this is the camera right here. Right here in front of me, I have the UNVR's big brother, the UNVR Pro. When it comes to Unify Protect, you have three different options on where you want to run the Protect software, the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, the UNVR, and this beast right here, the UNVR Pro. If you're unsure about this, I've done a video on the Unify Protect already. I've dropped a link down in the description below and it's popping up on the screen now. If you're new here, consider subscribing, drop me a like or leave me a comment down below of what you think of this product. And if you want to, you can buy me a coffee or join my Patreon as well. This machine can store up to 60 days worth of recordings for 20 4K cameras or 60 1080p cameras. Now, I'll be installing the G4 bullets with these, so it'll be interesting to see as Unified don't give a figure for the 1440p. Let me know down in the comments below if you know the answer. Now on the front of the unit, you'll see the seven drive bays, which I believe to this date Ubiquiti only mentioned you can add in an eight terabyte drive. I know there are people out there that have put 10, 12, even 14 terabyte drives. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Scan sells an 18 terabyte drive as well. But putting in seven 18 terabyte drives is gonna come at a price. In terms of connectivity, it has one 10 gig SFP plus port, one one gig RJ45 port, and you can also connect it to the USP RPS for the failover power supply. There's a 1.3 inch screen on the front that we've come to see on most Ubiquiti devices now. This is a tiny little screen that also has event previewing, which is on the Unify site. But there's a nice little asterisk next to it, which says this is coming in a future console update. But back to the storage side of things, you have the ability for RAID options, which will give you redundancy if a drive fails. You have RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. Now the RAID topic is out of scope for this, but just do a quick Google for RAID or RAID calculator and it will show you how much storage space you'll have and how many disks you can lose. One thing to remember is to look at Unify's incompatibility hard drive list as well. But to install the drive is fairly simple. Just want to pop one of these out. And then you can see up here, you've got the screws for the three and a half inch or two and a half inch bay. And you would literally do the same for all seven of these and then pop them back in. Interestingly, inside the box, you get a nice Unify Protect stickers. So we've seen these with other things like UFI or Ring. Uh, you get these little stickers that you can pop in your windows, but you can actually pop this with Unify Protect. I've not actually seen one of these in a Unify Protect, so this is the first time I'm seeing one of these in the UNVR Pro. Let me know if this is something recent or whether they've done this a little while back, I'm not sure. Inside the box, you get a nice packaging of the screws. So as we've come to expect, Ubiquiti's packaging is fairly good. Uh, that comes with all the hard drive screws and all the rest of it. You have a couple of rack mounts. There you go. Pops along here. And finally, you get this nice uh, power lead. Now, unfortunately for me living in the UK, we don't have these. We have the three pin plug. The supplier where we ordered this from, they send you a standard um, power lead. But the reason I say standard, if I show you on the back just here, there's a little uh, notch in the power lead and you can pop that in and then lock it into place. Now that stops the power lead from coming out. Whereas the UK one, you seem to get just a regular lead. Now Ubiquiti, uh, one thing I would say, and I'm probably speaking for most people in the UK, is we want these nice leads too. So it would be really good if you could send these with um, a UK version as well. We'll quickly go through how to set up the UNVR Pro. It's fairly similar to all the other Unify devices, but we'll quickly run through it anyway. So we've just logged into the IP address. So we've got that up here and we're just gonna type in um, the details. So the name of the device, just gonna leave it as UNVR Pro for now. Click next. And now it's gonna ask me to sign in. Uh, so I'm gonna use my details to quickly sign in. Once you've signed in, you click next, and I don't like the automatic update, so I'm just gonna disable that, and especially if your cameras are monitoring your area overnight, you definitely do not want this updating at night time in case something goes wrong. So let's click next. We don't wanna send any diagnostics or any performance information, so we'll click next. I've just blocked this out, but this basically shows you all of your information 
on here. So remote access is enabled, ubiquity account, location, time zone, etc. etc. And we'll go ahead and let this finish up, finish setting up. It does say it will take several minutes, so we'll come back as soon as this is done. So there we go, that's all completed. It actually went through a device update as well, and it's gone ahead and updated it to the latest version. Uh, so if we quickly jump down to here, you can see the settings at the bottom. You've got manage users, where you can add users and give them access to the UNVR Pro. You've got the system settings. Now within the system settings at the top, it gives you all the information about what version you're running and all the rest of it. Um, down here, you've got the hardware version and how much memory is in here. And granted, I should have probably said this at the start, I haven't actually put in any uh, storage devices yet, uh, just waiting for them to turn up, so I haven't put any hard drives in, but this will also give you an option on what RAID option you want to set. Down here, your Ethernet adapter, so it gives you an option to uh, set your DHCP address there and fallback address, and also on here, it gives you the option for the SFP Plus port as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to static. Uh, we're going to change it to 99.2. 10.99.0.1 is the gateway, and we're going to change this one to 10.99.0.2. The net mask is the same, primary DNS is the same, and then we go ahead and confirm the changes. So this is probably going to actually kick me out now once this does all of this, but I should just be able to go back to 10.99.0.1 once that's updated, and we should be able to reconnect into Unify Protect. So that was, sorry, I just typed in the wrong IP address at the top. So I put 99.0.1, it's 99.0.2. Uh, 99.0.1 takes you to the gateway, which we don't want to go to at this point. So go ahead and log in. And there we go. So if we jump into Unify Protect now, like I said, exactly the same. It shows you how, what storage you've got here, uh, how many 1080p cameras you've got, and how many 4K cameras you've got, and where your average motion time was this week. I'm going to go ahead and plug in a, device, a camera in a minute, so we'll see how to adopt that. You've got the unified device itself, so any settings you can see all along here. Uh, the live view, again, we'll have a look at this shortly uh, once I've added a camera. You can add a role just here if you want to do so, your activity and settings. But let's go back to the first bit first. Let's go ahead and add a camera. So I quickly went and plugged in the G4 bullet and you can see straight away that's popped up saying we're ready to add. So we go ahead and click add, uh, give it a name, whatever you want to name it. I'm just gonna leave it as G4 bullet for now. Just a side note, I am going to be doing a G4 Bullet review, so if you're not already, hit that subscribe button, and when that review comes out, you'll be able to see it. So that's going to go ahead, or that is going going ahead and updating, so we'll be back in a few minutes once that has been updated. And there we go, that's the camera adopted. You can see just here, we've got the name, model, uh, IP address, MAC address, and the connection speed. So you can see with the G4 versions, they are gigabit in connection. So the camera is right behind my green screen at the moment which is literally just behind me here um, and you can see that's just here by the by the green screen that's just there. Uh, further down we've got the information, uh, what the bit rate is, so 10,000 kilobits per second which is uh, 10 megabits per second, uh, last motion so it's not had any motion yet, recording settings, the recording is disabled again, I haven't actually installed any drives in here at the moment so unfortunately I can't show you that part. Uh, the settings, so the name, the microphone sens uh, sensitivity, if you want to disable the microphone, if you're adding in an external IR adapter, um, so you can actually buy these to throw the IR range a little bit further, the RTSP stream, uh, overlay information, uh, logo, time, date, whatever you want to do there, reboot and unmanage. So as I was showing you before, the live view, so you can now see the camera here. So here you can see the green screen, so the full screen, you can see my hand being raised, you can see that in the background just there with the lights, and you're able to create multiple other views. So obviously I only have one camera plugged in at the moment. Generally on a setup, you would have a number of them and you can customize your view however you want it to look. Uh, here is the activities from the UNVR Pro, so it was offline earlier, and now we've got the camera updated. Right, into the settings, so you've got general, this is where you manage your um, Unified Protect application, so if you want to update it, it's in device settings, what temperature you want to show, and what clock you want. You can enable smart detections, so this is something that's new uh, in the Unified G4 range. Uh, new in the sense that it's not available in the G3, but you can have it in the G4. You click agree, and it turns on. Video retention, we have time-based recording deletion. So what this does is it reaches the maximum limit of your hard drive, and then it starts deleting all the older version. Um, if you want to actually bring down the number of days, you can do that just there. 
daily backups. So this is the backup of the Protect configuration. Do not get this confused for the Unify for the video recordings because it is only the configuration of the system. So be sure to make sure you take a backup of that. So create backup of current system. Advanced configuration. This device password, keep this safe. I've gone through this a number of times myself. If you ever need to re-adopt your camera and it's saying it's managed by another system, it saves you going all the way up to the camera to reset it, especially if those cameras are high up. So be sure to keep that password safe. And then we move into my alerts. So depending on what kind of alerts you need, you can have um, connect or disconnect and you can have that via email or push. Motion as well, so if you see motion on the camera or smart detection. So. Depending on how you set up, this can be as complex or it can be as simple as you want it to be. Um, if you have a custom schedule, for example, you want to receive alerts between, let's say, midnight, midnight to 8 a.m. We can pop those in. And then same from after, say, 6 p.m. to midnight. So during the day, you don't want to hear anything. People might be around during the daytime. And at night time, you want to be able to alert if someone is around the area. So entirely up to you how you want to set that up. One last thing I do want to show you is the um, the actual settings of the camera. So you can adjust the picture. I think I skipped over this earlier, but when you click play, uh, you have the settings in the top corner here, and you can then adjust the, the microphone. You can adjust the brightness of the camera. Uh, contrast, hue, there you go, so that just updated. Um, the brightness, so contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, the noise. AE mode, so auto exposure, uh, the orientation if you have it in a different way, the infrared settings, uh, LDC, and HDR. So these are settings that can be changed and if you wanna go ahead, and look at the resolution, you've got 720 or four megapixels, so you can choose whichever one you want. And if you wanna to listen to what's happening at that point, I'm actually talking and you can hear me on the camera as well. You can take a snapshot and you can make this full screen if you want as well. So this is the 1.3 inch LCD screen. Uh, so if we go from the top left here, this shows you the drives and what you have installed. So as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately I don't have any drives installed, but it says you need to install this to increase storage. And it also nicely says go to ui.com to order. So don't order from anywhere else, just go from go to ui.com. And that shows you all the disks. Um, the eye at the bottom left, it shows you the system CPU and the memory, uh, the throughput, and what IP addresses you have set, the uptime, temperature, and the MAC address. Then we have a look at the settings in the bottom left hand corner. It shows the brightness of the screen, so you can play around with that. Leave it to what it was, roughly around 78%. Uh, the color of the screen, or the background color should I say, the fans. It does flick back to auto, but I'm sure you can hear that. Um, those fans get going, they can be quite loud. Um, device control, so shut down and restart, and we're back to brightness. These you can scroll through all the cameras that you have set up, and this is actually a live view of your camera. So um, yeah, I mean this is this is the camera right here. It's quite cool, I think, in terms of the feature. Uh, it's not something you see. But if you wanted to quickly flick through your LCD display just to see the cameras, you could quickly do that, which is really cool. So I mentioned earlier I didn't have any drives to install, but now I do. So I'm going to be filling this out with some four terabyte drives. You would pop that in, so make sure you pop it in the right way. So you want your connections facing outwards. Pop that side in here, and then if you push down hard enough, it will clip into place. So then to take it out, you just pull that little tab there. So it's almost like a screwless install, but there is one screw on the side here. So we'll quickly go ahead and install that. So inside the pack that Ubiquiti supplied, you've got all these screws here. So we'll just grab one of these. Okay, so that screw has now been populated and to install it, I'm just gonna lift this up. You would just pop your drive in like this, pop it in and then clip it down. And there we go, that's the drive installation. You can go ahead and see the storage utilization here. So you can always keep an eye. I've got 24 cameras connected to this at the moment. Well, not at this moment, but there are 24 adopted to this device. So if we go to the settings of the uh, UNVR Pro, you can see here we have the storage options. So previously when I showed you this before, there wasn't an option for this, but you can see four drives are blinking at the moment and the redundancy level is already set to one disk. 
Now, if you click on the eye, it quickly shows you what there is. So you've got preferred options. You've got a single disk to be used for data redundancy, which is a RAID 1 or RAID 5 configuration. And you've also got half the disks, which is RAID 10. So only half the disks will be used. So I've got 16 terabytes installed. So if I chose half the disk, I'd only have eight terabytes. And at the moment, because I've only chosen one disk from 16 terabytes, I'm down to 12 terabytes. There is one more option here, which is a hot spare. So you can load out all seven bays um, and pop one hot spare in. That will allow you to use six disks. Um, what that basically means is, if I quickly hover over the eye, it might just be easier. So when you enable the hot spare, it will decrease the number of available drives by one. So keep that one in mind. So if one disk fails, the hot spare takes over. So you don't actually have any downtime at that point. Not downtime, you don't put yourself in a risk where you could lose one drive and then another one fail immediately because the hot spare would take over. So currently that's gonna take about seven hours to build that RAID configuration. So we'll let that go off and do what it needs to do there. One last thing I wanted to show you was the camera itself. So you can go to recording now. Previously I didn't have the recording options, but I have that capability now. So you can go always, never, motion events, smart detection events. So you can choose when you want the recording to happen. Uh, the quality of the recording, so you have high frame rate mode. This will decrease your resolution size of your recordings when you select the high frame rate, but it will give you um, higher FPS. The image quality, so we've got 100% best image at the moment. Uh, motion detection, so how much seconds you want to collect before, after the motion has happened. Uh, same with smart detection, so if you want um, person detection and vehicle detection. Motion zone, so you can add in the motion zone, so depending on where you're setting this up, you can set them up accordingly and create those zones. If you want to detect motion in one area, not another. Uh, smart zones, same thing, where you want the smart zone to be detected, um, if you want that to be the case. And your privacy drone, so privacy zones, sorry. So there may be some areas where you're overlooking perhaps a neighbor's garden or somewhere where you're not supposed to be recording. You can stick in a privacy zone so you're not recording anything on that part. Now I haven't put this into a rack yet, but I wanna see these rack ears hold up the weight of this uh, because without the drives themselves, this is actually quite heavy. Now I can only imagine adding in seven drives in there. It's gonna be fairly heavy uh, in terms of keeping up the weight of this. Another thing I think Unify is lacking on this is the ability to migrate video recording. Ubiquity, you really need to work on this one because people will be migrating away from Unify Video and even going from the cloud key of UNVR and upgrading to the UNVR Pro. So businesses really need a way to maintain their data. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.